Aloha, hano hano i kea kua, aloha kea kua ia oi, pehe oi, ah mai ka i no, mai ka i no. And a rough translation in the Hawaiian language, as you well know, is we are in the presence of the divine spirit. Alo and ha, hano hano, glory that we're here on the crown jewel of the Hawaiian Islands here on this beautiful beach in Maui to celebrate a most important and wonderful time in your lives, Charles and Ellen. You are here to celebrate your marriage like fine red wine. Your relationship has only grown better with age. And little did you know, when you met in December of last year and you had your first date, uh, in January, when you went out for lunch in Jacksonville, that your lives would never be the same again. Little did you know that you were both meeting your future spouse. And little did you know, Ellen, when you went on that hike in Colorado, there at uh, Red Rocks in this last June, that that would be the time and the location and the place that Charles would then ask you to be his bride and you said yes i would so here we are on this beautiful beach here in maui to celebrate your love for one another as you're united in marriage your relationship is changing today no longer are you just the best of friends but your friendship is going to grow much much deeper you remember of course when you first met you remember when you first kissed and you remember the first time when your heart and soul were turned upside down. And today you bring all those emotions into something so much more. Today you're making a commitment, a commitment that will produce a lifetime of fulfillment. And as you enter into marriage, it's important to remember that it takes a lot of love and a lot of work to make a good marriage. Having taught, as you know, at the University of Hawaii, where you grew up and where you attended your undergraduate work, that love is a verb. It's not just a state of being, but it's an action verb. Poet Carl Sandburg 
put it best when he said, and I quote, I love you for what you are, but I love you yet, no, yet more for what you're going to be. I love you not so much for your realities as for your ideals. I pray for your desires that they may be great rather than for your satisfactions, which may be so hazardously little. A satisfied flower is one whose petals are about to fall, but the most beautiful rose is one hardly more than a bud, wherein the pangs and ecstasies of desire are working for larger and finer growth. Not always shall you be what you are now. You're going forward towards something great, and I'm on the way with you. I love you. And as you know, why marriages, Ellen and Charles, are often built and founded upon love, emotions, well, they can be fickle at times. So in the Hawaiian language, as you know, Charles, we have a special word. And that word is ho'oponopono, which means to put things right by family discussion. In other words, if there is ever any disagreements, to make sure you talk about things, resolve those issues before the setting of the sun. Ho oponopono. That's the best way to keep small misunderstandings from growing into larger misunderstandings. Well, today this is it. This is it, Charles. Your marriage is recognized in all nine Hawaiian islands, including Las Vegas, <laughs> all 50 states, across the planet, around the world. It's a legally binding contract. But it's much more than a contract. It's a commitment. A commitment to one another, a commitment to your blended families. But marriage is much more than a commitment. It's a covenant. A covenant that says, I love you. I trust you. I'll be here for you when you're hurting. And when I'm hurting, I won't leave. And so when you think of your marriage and your family, it's important to add one more word, a new word to your commitment, to your marriage, to your relationship, and that word is legacy. Legacy. By your love and commitment to each other, you produced a bond that's a lasting legacy. A legacy for many generations to come. So expect the best from each other, and your home is going to be transformed into a castle where love reigns. Charles, you've arranged for a beautiful lay to be given to your bride, and this lay is fresh, beautiful, delicate, fragrant, a beautiful reflection of the gift that God has given to you. And so in the Hawaiian tradition, I'd like you to place that lei around Ellen's neck, giving her a kiss on each cheek. You may do so now. Love you, baby. Love you. Love you. What a beautiful token of a beautiful gift that you have been given, Charles. And Charles, although you and I haven't known each other that long, and although I'm much older than you, I know that you and I have one thing in common, and that is that you and I have both married way out of our league. <laughs> and this lay represents the beautiful gift that you have been given. Uh, and so I have a few questions for you, Charles, and you can answer these questions all at the end, so you can just wait. Is it your desire, Charles, to have Ellen as your wife, and do you promise to love and cherish her? giving her assistance in all of life's labors? And do you promise to be true to her, both in sickness and health, both when things are going well and when there may be some difficulties? And do you promise to be faithful to her for as long as you both shall live? And if so, you can look into her eyes and answer those questions. Mm, I do. Beautiful, beautiful. Cherish Ellen always, and I know you will. And Ellen, you've also arranged for a very manly lay to be given to your husband. And so in the Hawaiian tradition, as you place that lay around his neck, would you give him a kiss on each cheek, please? Oh, that's good, that's good. That's double there. This time. Wonderful. <laughs> Beautiful, very good, very nice. Well, Charles, your lei doesn't have any flowers, uh, but your lei is made out of miley leaves. 
And this, as you know, in the Hawaiian culture, in the Hawaiian history, means that you are willing as a man to do whatever it takes to defend the honor of your wife, to defend her reputation, to lay down your life if necessary for this wonderful gift that God has given to you today. And so I have a few questions for you, Ellen. Ellen, is it your desire to have Charles as your husband? And do you promise to love and cherish him, giving him assistance in all of life's labors? And do you promise to be true to him, both in sickness and health, both when things are going well and when there are some difficulties? And do you promise to be faithful to him for as long as you both shall live? And if so, you can look into his eyes and answer those questions. I do. Ellen, cherish Charles always, and I know that you will. Now you will feel no rain, <laughs> for each of you will be shelter for the other. Now you will feel no cold, for each of you will be warmth for each other. And now you will feel no loneliness, for each of you will be companion to the other. Charles, I believe you have a token of your love for Ellen. And this is a beautiful white gold band with more diamonds than I can count. It's white gold, isn't it? Platinum. Platinum. <laughs> wow, even the better, the best. Platinum, oh my goodness. The finest of all metals that has been refined by fire to drive out any impurities. And those diamonds have been formed under tremendous pressure, under tremendous heat. It's a wonderful token of the man that you are. All these experiences that you have had, all the trials and tribulations have made you into the man that you are today. And so as you take that ring and as you place that on her hand, would you look into her eyes and repeat after me? Look into her eyes. From this day on. From this day on. I, Charles. I, Charles. Take you, Ellen. Take you, Ellen. To be my wife. To be my wife. I will love you. I will cherish you. I will love you. I cherish you. I will be true to I will you. I will be true to you. No matter what comes into our lives. No matter what comes into our lives. Whether we are rich or poor. Whether we're rich or poor. Whether there is sickness or health. Whether there's sickness or health. I'm committed to stay with you. I'm committed to stay with you. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. And with this ring. With this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. I now pledge my vow. I now pledge my vow. Of marriage to you. Of marriage to you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> well done. Well done. And Ellen, you also have a token of your love for Charles. And as I look at this ring, is this also white gold? It's also platinum. platinum. <laughs> it's also platinum. As I look at this beautiful platinum ring and I turn it around in my hands, no matter which way I turn this ring around, there's no beginning, there's no end. It just keeps going and going and going and going. And that speaks of the eternal quality of that love that you are pledging to him. And so, Ellen, I'm going to ask that you would take this ring, and I'll take this, and as you look into his eyes and place this ring on his finger, would you please repeat after me? From this day on. From this day on. I, Ellen. I, Ellen. Take you, Charles. Take you, Charles. To be my husband. To be my husband. I will love you. I will love you. I will cherish you. I will cherish you. I will be true to you. I will be true to you. No matter what comes into our lives. No matter what comes into our lives. If we are rich or poor. If we are rich or poor. If there is sickness or health. If there is sickness or health. I'm committed to stay with you. I'm committed to stay with for you. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. And with this ring. And with this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. I now pledge my vow. I now pledge my vow of marriage to you. Of marriage to you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Well, you guys, I know 
that you are both going to experience in the days and the months and the years ahead. A deeper degree of love that you have ever experienced or ever known in all of your lives for each other. A greater degree of joy than you have ever known in the accomplishments of one another. A greater degree of understanding that your interests and desires, well, they may not always be exactly the same. And that's what makes you both so unique and so perfect for each other. A greater degree of friendship based on mutual trust. A greater degree of courage to speak of any misunderstanding that you might have before the setting of the sun. Remember ho oponopono. A greater degree of foresight to realize that rainbows follow rainy days. A greater degree of imagination to keep with you a part of the child that you used to be. A, and so for that reason, I'm going to encourage you every once in a while to call in sick, play hooky, go barefoot more often, eat more ice cream, laugh and giggle and have fun and remember what attracted you to one another at the very beginning. Finally, a greater degree of awareness to live each day with the knowledge that there is no promise of tomorrow. Life is short. Forgive quickly. Kiss slowly. Love truly. Laugh uncontrollably. And never regret anything that made you smile. And so now that you, Charles and Ellen, now that you have openly expressed your desire to unite in the covenant of marriage, and as you've exchanged these very symbolic Hawaiian lays, and as you've exchanged tokens of your vow, through the exchange of rings, I, David Corson, by the authority granted to me by the state of Hawaii and by the power granted to me as a minister of the gospel, now pronounce you husband and wife. You may now kiss your bride. <laughs> Bye.